All right, Shalom. Uh, all praises to Yahweh, Ba Hashem Yahweh Double honors to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone that rule well. And uh, blessings to the hopeful elect, teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. Um, basically, this, this is going to be um, a lesson in regards to prophecy or the scriptures. Um, jumping from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Because um, you've got a lot of people that like to talk about how the Old Testament wasn't a part of the New Testament and so on and so forth, man. Or the New Testament and vice versa. All right. However, we also know that there were things that were prophesied in the Old Testament by certain men that would play out in the future, which would be in the New Testament. All right. Now, um, in fact, let me start off with this scripture uh, real quick, if I can get it. Um, just bear with me. Okay. Right, this is going to be Revelation 19 and 10. And it says... And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, and that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, worship the Most High. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, now let's get this precept real quick right here. In um, 2 Ezra's, I'm going to start from 2 Ezra's 15 from the top. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So we've been given a commandment, okay, um, to do the will, will of the Heavenly Father. And one of those commandments is to speak the word of prophecy, okay. And the Lord said he was going to put it in our mouth to speak these words of prophecy, which was the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Because why? Because we're witnesses to that. Okay, it just you just read it in uh, Revelation 19 and 10. The testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, verse 2 says, and caused them to be written in paper, right? And it's in paper, all right? For they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. So, you want to come up against this word, man? Um, really and truly, you're just condemning, you're just there to get condemned, all right? Because the Lord said, don't fear the incredulity because all the unfaithful were going to die. In the next verse, it says, all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. We don't have to actually worry about um, the uh, the incredulity, which is basically goes back to the word unbelief. Okay, we don't have to worry about you guys because the scripture says in Romans 3 and 3, and let me get that real quick. Okay, I'm going to get a couple of these scriptures out. You know, I'm just going in the spirit. I did have something to go into, um, but I'm just going to make a point real quick. It says, Romans 3 and 3, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? The Most High forbid ye, let the Most High be true, Yahweh be true, but every man a liar, okay? So, you got to understand that it doesn't matter if some did not believe, okay? Because the, the Lord said his sanctuary was going to be a small one, and also he says, unto you, O men, I call. All right, it's a small sanctuary. Hey, uh, uh, the scripture also said that broad is the, the, the way that leadeth to destruction. All right, but narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. So you got to understand that this, the Lord, this ain't meant for everyone to get. Okay, this is only meant um, for certain, this is only meant for certain men on the planet to, to, to get, man, to understand. All right, why? Because it is given you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Romans 11 and 7 says the election have obtained it, but the rest were blinded. But let's get into the lesson real here, uh, real quick right here. I'm going to go to 2 Samuel um, 7 and, um, and I'm going to start from 12. Okay. Now, this is a prophecy um, speaking, spoken of by Nathan to, uh, to, uh, uh, to David. Okay. It says, all right, it says, I'm going to start from verse 3. And Nathan said to the king, Go and do the, all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Thou shalt build me a house for me to dwell in. Um, uh, shalt thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Whereas I, ha I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought the children up at the land of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in, in a tent, in, in a tabernacle. Okay? Alright, so that we've established that uh, Nathan was talking to, to King David Okay Now let's go down to verse 12 It says And when these days be fulfilled Thou shalt sleep with thy fathers Alright so when these days be fulfilled uh, King David was going to sleep with his fathers And I will set up thy seed after thee 
Okay, so after he goes to sleep, basically after he dies, gives up the spirit, and he's going to set up his seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Okay, now who's that talking about? Okay, because it weren't talking... I mean, it was obviously talking about King Solomon, but it was also talking about King uh, Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai came back as King Solomon. Um, Yahweh Shai was King Solomon, okay, back in the past in the reincarnation. But that's another lesson for an, uh, for another day, okay. Um, Revelation twenty two and sixteen. I Yahweh Shai have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So. Um, Yahweh Shai is the root in the offspring of David, man. Okay, and that's in the New Testament. But let's go back to the old and continue on. Verse 13 And he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish his throne, uh, establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Now, that weren't talking about King Solomon's, uh, uh, King, when King Solomon built up the temple. Why? It weren't, it weren't talking about King Solomon because his uh, kingdom wasn't established forever. Okay, that's talking about in the future. This is uh, going to be playing out in the future. How do we know that? Well, we can go to Daniel. Um, we can go to Daniel. I believe. 2 and 44. Okay, here we go. Daniel 2 and 44. And in the days of these kings shall the Most High of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. All right, because we know that King Solomon's kingdom only lasted, there was only peace for about 40 years. Okay, so that wasn't talking about back then. All right, this is, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Okay, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. And that's how you know it wasn't talking about back then because now you've got this uh, so-called white man's kingdom in which we are living in today. All right, and we already know that 2nd Ezra 6 and 9 says that Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. The kingdom of the Israelites, man, the kingdom of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, that's coming in the future. All right, and that kingdom ain't never going to be destroyed and it's going to stand forever. So you know that uh, that wasn't spoken of back in Samuel. That wasn't talking about King Solomon's um, time, man. All right, because his kingdom only lasted for 40, uh, 40 years apiece. Okay, now let's keep going in back in 2nd Samuel uh, 7 and 14. I will be his father and he shall be my son. All right. And this is all spoken of through the spirit, by the way. OK, it's all spoken of through the spirit. And if he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. And it's like basically when when, when a man of the Lord speaks, um, when a man of the Lord speaks, you better take heed to that man of the Lord, man, because the, the spirit of the most high is speaking through that man. All right. It's the spirit of prophecy. It's the spirit is working through that man. It, the, the Lord said that where his mouthpiece is. So when the prophets, I mean, a lot of prophets, man, especially Elijah, man, he was a, 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 a one of the greatest prophets. He was the greatest prophet, man. All right. Well, one of the greatest prophets. All right. When people, when he used to go into certain towns, people used to say, oh, come us down in peace. They were shook. All right, but nowadays, people, they don't consider us, man, uh, as, as being anything. They just think, oh, they, look at these bums. Go get a job. And they heckle us. But, hey, we know that that's prophecy as well. Because the Lord said, um, blessed are you when men shall persecute you and, and separate you from there. And cast out your name for, as evil for my name's sake. All right. So you, you got to understand and be spiritual that these this was spoken of and this was going to happen. All right. They did it to Yahweh Shai. How much more his servants. Okay. All right. So now, now that was a future prophecy. Okay. But let's keep going. It says, but my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul. All right, and Saul really ultimately hated King David because the spirit was dealing heavy with King David. And we're going to go into the reason as to why it was dealing heavy through King David, man. All right, we're going to go into the reasons as to why King David, uh, uh, King Saul actually hated King David. Okay, because at the end of the day, um, the spirit was working heavy. All right, and that's the same way these guys are looking at us, man. You got these, these two third frame of mind niggas. They hate us because the spirit is dealing with us. And they're thinking, oh, shit, how come the spirit ain't on me? How comes I can't I can't generate the will to repent? Or how comes I can't go out there? I, I, I can't put myself out there on the highways and byways, make myself a living sacrifice. Why? Because you ain't been called, man. All right? You, you just ain't got it, man. You, you know, and you hate us for that. You hate us because we have the ability as men to stand up uh, we're the only men out of the nation of Israel that are standing up on the highways and the byways and we're going out there and making our bodies a living sacrifice and you you can't stand up, we're real men, alright? We're the real alphas, man. You guys are some fucking Zetas. You're not even a beta, man, alright? 
And it says, And the house of thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee, and thy throne shall be established forever. Now that was talking about Yahweh Shai, man. Because when he comes back and he cracks them clouds, he's going to set up a kingdom that shall, and, and, and it shall never be destroyed, man. And it won't be left to other people. We just read that. Okay, now that's it on um on 2 Samuel. Let me go back to Daniel real quick. I'm going to get another quick precept. I believe it's in... um. Daniel 7. Here we go. It's Daniel 7 and 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So these are the, post of, uh, the, the things that we're supposed to be pre uh, preaching, man. These are the uh, things that we're supposed to be uh, teaching and talking about. The things... Uh, 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 speaking of prophecy, the Lord said, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. And this hasn't come to pass yet. All right. Jeremiah 16 and 16 says we're going to be fishers. We're going to be fishers of men first. And then we're going to be changed into hunters. And that's the time when we're going to be joint with Yahweh Shai and the dead is going to rise first and meet him in the cloud. And we're going to come and take, take over this whole earth, man. And that's when the kingdom is going to be established and it ain't going to be taken and left to other people. Uh, it's going to be taken by us. But it's not going to be left to other people and it's going to stand forever and forever. Okay, that wasn't talking about uh, King Solomon's time, man. All right, this is a future prophecy that is yet to be played out. But now let's go into Psalms um, 22. Okay, because there was some heinous things that was done to Yahweh Shai when he was walking the earth, man. All right, he, he, he suffered a violent death. All right, he got tortured to death. And basically, man, he had... He was he was stressed so much in the Garden of Gethsemane that he was sweating uh sweating blood, man. All right. So you gotta understand that this was spoken of back then, uh, and that was a that was a prophecy that was uh, supposed to be uh, fulfilled when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, cause he had to get trashed with the rod of uh with the rod of men, and that's how we know he was um King Solomon in the reincarnation. Why? Because he didn't commit iniquity as Yahweh Shai, but he did as as uh, King Solomon. All right. Was laying uh. Not for laying with the women of the other nations, but uh, giving himself over to their gods and so on and so forth. Marrying them, man. Getting all up in their ways. All right? All right? Doing witchcraft. Giving himself to madness, man. The these things is what King Solomon was getting up to. So he had to pay that, pay for that when he came back as Yahweh Shai. And that was a future prophecy, okay? All right? And also, he was called the root and offspring of David. All right? We know that when we go to Revelation 22. We just read that out in the first part of the lesson. Okay? Now, let's go into the... Uh, the things that Yahweh Shai had to suffer, man. All right. Matthew 27 and 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Yahweh Shai into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they pla uh, plated a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spat upon him. And they took the reed and smote him on the head. So they battered him, man. They spat on him. They smote him about. All right. And these were the things that Yahweh Shai knew that he had to suffer, man. All right. Because he knew that he would he was, uh, gonna have to pay for the for the kings of uh, for the sins of when he was back as Solomon, man. All right. He knew that he had to come back and suffer these things, and that's why he had that moment. Apostle Gobar did a brilliant video. He had that moment of doubt in the Garden of Gethsemane, which Gethsemane means oil press, man. All right, and Yahweh Shai is, is known as the Anointed One, and he was the oil that was being pressed. So that name was fitting. It was a nomen omen. He was getting his. Um, he was the oil that was being pressed in that garden, man. He was the Anointed One being pressed down in the spirit quite heavily, and this, and, and they spat upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe of him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. All right. So Yahweh Shai, he suffered a great many of horrors, man. All right. And that's the reason why he was sweating blood. OK, because he had to go through certain things, man. The scripture says we haven't resisted unto blood. All right. But if they did this to Yahweh Shai, hey, you best know that they're coming for us, man. All right. But it's going to be different this time. The Lord said when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord was going to raise up a standard against them. And we're going to be able to fight back. All right. If we be the ones that are allotted to get them spiritual powers, man. Hey, that's that's it, man. All right. Esau's through. OK, it says, um, let's go to uh, Isaiah 53 and 10. And this is another prophecy. OK, because uh, Matthew, the book of Matthew, uh, that's in the New Testament. All right. Well, let's go into the Old Testament for you, you know, you grape juice drinkers, like Apostle Tahar calls you, man, you churchgoers that like to separate the Old from the New Testament, man. 
all right it's all one book uh, Isaiah 53 and 10 yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him he uh, he have put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin that shall see his his seed he shall prolong his days and in the uh, pleasure of the Lord he shall prosper in his hand okay in fact let me start up from I'm gonna start up mm. I'm going to start off from verse 3. Isaiah 53 and 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows. And that's why the Lord had a hair full of full of uh, gray hairs, man. A hair, uh, white woolly gray hair. Okay? Woolly in texture. And acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces for, from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He, he died for the sins of the nation of Israel, namely the elect. Okay, he took on all of our burdens, man. All right, and he put it up on that cross and then he said it was done. It had to be fulfilled. And Yahweh Shai knew that he came to fulfill. He told you that in uh, Matthew 5. Think that I'm not come to destroy the law or the prophets, the prophecies. I'm not come to destroy it, but to fulfill. All right, so it ain't talking about, oh, the law has been done away with or the prophecies from the Old Testament linking up with it. They ain't been done away with, man. It's all one book. All right, we're going back and forth and we're showing you the spirit of prophecy, man. All right. And it says, but he was wounded for our trans... In fact, it says, surely he upon our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of the most high and afflicted. He was wounded, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. So he, he received many stripes, man. All right. And what do we read in 2 Samuel 7, man? If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. He received many stripes, but not as King Solomon, but as Yahweh Shai. Okay? So that's a small example of reincarnation back there, man. All right? Now let's go back to Matthew 27 uh, and verse 33. Okay? But when they were come to a place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar mingled with gall. And when he tasted thereof, he would not drink. All right, so they made they gave him vinegar to drink mixed with piss, man. All right, and and when he tasted that, he wouldn't drink, man. Then that's man. When you think about even for anybody, man, to even be put in a situation like that, getting tortured and then you know being so thirsty, dehydrated, and then you are gonna give a man uh, vinegar mixed with gall, man. These demons and these say demons, man. They are walking back here today, man, and they're here for their judgment. Okay, in fact, let's get that real quick. Okay, seeing as we're on this subject. Let's get um, Revelation. I don't even mean to go into this, but it's the spirit, man. Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. All right, because when he was on that uh, cross, man, you had some fucking uh, them, them Roman um, guards. They fucking pierced him on that cross, man. All right, and you had Jake that were uh, just like how you got Jake today in the fucking military. Have you got Jake working for these, uh, working with these cops and shit, being sergeants, getting up in the ranks? You had them in there today as well, man. So the Lord's coming for all of them niggas, man. All right, and them fucking heathens, um, those which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, so let it be done. Okay, so let it be true. Okay. So those which pierced him, they're here today, man. When the Lord comes with clouds, those which pierced him, they're gonna hear and they're gonna meet their, they're gonna be here and they're gonna meet their judgment, man. The Lord is preserving them for that day. All right, the the the, the, the scripture says, "Now will I cr uh, cry like a travailing woman." The day of the Lord burns in his heart, man. Yahweh Shai can't wait to come back and get down to business. Okay, now let's go back to Matthew, um, the twenty seventh, the twenty seventh chapter and verse thirty four. And they gave him vinegar to drink mixed with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. So they put it to him and he... Oh, imagine that, man. You get a mouth full of that shit and you spit... Oh, fuck. And you're, full of, you're, you're in so much pain, man. You know, your body weight, you're getting pulled down. You've got fucking strapped up with them nails and shit. Your feet. And you're getting pulled down by gravity. And at the same time, they're going to fucking mock you, spit on you. And they're giving you vinegar mixed with gall to drink, man. All right? Now, um, let's go to the Old Testament. This, you know, the Old Testament. Uh, this is Psalm 69. This is another prophecy uh, spoken of King David, man. And King David wasn't just a king. He was also a prophet. Why? Because he spoke prophecy, man. All right. He prophesied right here in this verse. Psalm 69 and 21. They gave me also gall for my meat 
and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. All right, so that's talking about, hey man, King David spoke spoke about this and he was heavy in the spirit, man. That's why when we say when, when brothers are speaking in the spirit, don't be thinking that this brother is just any brother, man. Because at the end of the day, you don't know who he is in the reincarnation, man. He might be making a prophecy, he might say something so random, but at the same time he's heavy in the spirit. And then later on it gets played out, you know, oh, shit, the brother said that that was going to happen. Oh shit, that was prophesied. And this is what King David was doing, man. He was so heavy in the spirit and that's why King Saul hated King David, man. All right? He was so heavy in the spirit and he had that, that jealousy, that covetousness about him, man. He looked at King David and thought, fuck, why is the Lord dealing with you, man? He should be dealing with me. All right? And that's the same way that these guys, these scoffers and these scorners, they see us, man, because we're heavy in the spirit, man. All right? We come bold with it. All right? Right, and that was in the so-called, uh, um, so-called, that was in the Old Testament. All right? And they gave me also gall for my meat and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Okay, let's go back to Matthew, the New Testament, 27 and 34. They gave him vinegar to drink, mixed with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. Same thing, man. Same thing that King David was prophesying, man. All right, let's go to the next verse. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots. Okay, that it might be fulfilled. Here we go. Which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them and parted my vesture. They did cast lots. Okay. Which prophet is that speaking about? And when you go to um when you go to Psalms, I believe it's in Psalms. Psalms 22. Here we go. And I'm gonna start from 16. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Now who's that talking about, man? That's talking about Yahweh Shai, whom you crucified and hung on a tree, man. That's talking about Yahweh Shai in the New Testament when he came back and he had to pay for his sins that he committed as King Solomon, man. All right. And King David was in the spirit heavy and he prophesied this, man. He wasn't talking about King Solomon. He wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about Yahweh Shai coming uh, in a reincarnation in the future, man. All right. I may tell, verse 17, I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. Uh, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Okay. Now, King David prophesied that in the Old Testament, man. Let's go back to Matthew 27 uh, and 35. They crucified him, all right, pierced his hands and his feet and parted his garments and casting lots. Okay. The same thing, man, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the prophet. Now, let's round it off with this precept right here, man. Matthew 5. All right, because this is heavy, man. This is. Man, when I found this out, man, hey, the, the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is moving, man, through this, through uh, the brothers in Great Millstone, man, the apostles and the elders. It's beautiful, man. This is what builds up our faith. When we go back and forth through these scriptures, we get uh, uh, floodgates of faith coming through, man. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's why the, uh, the scripture says, blessed is he that readeth, man. You ain't going to get this unless someone teaches it to you or you go and read and find out for yourself. And you get the understanding, man. Okay, Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am to come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And Apostle Gabar, again, I'll say he did a great um, sit down on, on this uh, verse right here, man. All right, because Yahweh Shai came to fulfill everything. And that's why he knew that he had to suffer on that cross, man. That's why he was sweating blood, because he was, um, he, he, the feelings of doubt was streaming through him, because at the end of the day, he thought that he was being forsaken. All right. When he was on that cross, what did he say to the Lord? In fact, let's get it. OK, let's get it, which is also a part of prophecy as well, man. Um, Give me a second, man. Uh, Why? Stay with me, brothers. Stay with me, man. I'm going to close up on these last few scriptures right here. Right. Still in Matthew 27. Um. OK, OK. Matthew 27. And this is another example of what had to be fulfilled. And Yahweh Shai knew this. He knew all things. And verse 46, and about the ninth hour, Yahweh Shai cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my power, my power, why hast thou forsaken me? All right, so he thought that he was being forsaken. In that very moment, he had that feeling of doubt, man. He prayed three times to his father in the garden of Gethsemane. Hey, and the Lord is a hard teacher, man. All right. The Lord is a hard teacher. 
All right, that's why we can't get, we haven't resisted unto blood. We can't get all, woe is me in the spirit when we, we get a bit of trials and tribulation. As it is written in Sirach 2, my son, if thou come to serve at thy Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. We ain't resisted unto blood, man. Look at the stuff that Yahweh Shai went to, man. He thought that he was being forsaken, all right? And that was also a part of the prophecy. When we go back to Psalms, again, King David, Psalm 22, this is beautiful right here, man. Watch this, it says, my power, it starts off with this verse, man. My power, my power, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? And it's funny because, well, it's not funny, but Yahweh Shai is known as the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. And what do lions do, man? They roar. All right. So, you, hey, man, King David, he was heavy in the spirit, man. King David was in the spirit and he was speaking about Yahweh Shai, man. He was saying, my power, my power, the exact same words that Yahweh Shai said when he was up on that cross, man. All right. When he had that feeling of doubt, when he felt that his father turned his back on him, man. But his father, look, man, I'm telling you right now, man, if you don't believe in these prophecies, man, then the Lord ain't dealing with you, man. All right. And you niggas, you scoffers and scorners, you can't get it because you can't go through the precepts like this, man. All right, you can't do it like how we can do it over here at Great Millstone, man. We come bold with it. We're in the spirit, just like King David was, man. All right, and you, you you're jealous of the spirit, just like the spirit of spirits, the wicked spirits that King um, Saul had on him, man. You're looking at us like how he was looking at David, man. All right, you fucking wicked niggas, man. Excuse my French. I'm gonna say this, man. It says, "My power, my power. Why, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me?" And from the words of my roaring. Now let's go back to Matthew 27 and um, 46. It says, I'm going to jump to the end of the uh, of the verse. My power, my power, why hast thou forsaken me? Now that's talking about the prophecies that King David was speaking of in the Old Testament in Psalms 22, man. All right, so for all you scoffers and you, you pork chop pastors like, like to say, oh, the Old Testament ain't, doing, ain't got nothing to do with the new, the new uh, and the old. Man, you're chatting bullshit, man. All right, because the scripture says uh, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, man. Okay. In fact, if I can get it, I believe it's Isaiah. Uh, here we go. Isaiah 28 and 13. But the word of the Lord Yahweh was unto them precept upon precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little that they might go and fall backward and be broken and be snared and be taken. So we got to look, man. We got to go through these through these scriptures, precept upon precept, line upon line. The scriptures say, through thy precepts, I gain understanding, man. All right. And in Proverbs 4 and 7, I believe it says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all that getting, get understanding, man. So you got to pray to the heavenly father to put that spirit on you, man, for the Lord to suck with you, man. All right. The, the spirit of prophecy is a beautiful thing, man. Get into them prophecies, man. Stay tuned into them prophecies. Get grounded, man. And I'm speaking for myself first and foremost. I ain't nothing, man. I'm just a baby, man. All right? I, but I'm glad all praise to Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. The Lord is supping, man. And I can feel the presence of the spirit, man. All right? If you don't feel that way, man, you better pray to the Lord to put that spirit on you, man. As it is written, faith is a gift. And no man can receive anything unless it be given him from the heavenly father, man. So Lord willing, you are king, we edified, man. I didn't want to make this go on too long, but it was the spirit. All praises to Yahweh Bar Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man. The spirit of prophecy is what we're about, man. The testimony of Yahweh Shai, man. The volume of the book. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, man.